Next up in my Los Angeles reading list is James Elroy, specifically the Black Dahlia from his L.A. Quartet. I got this omnibus edition for my birthday last year because uh, a commenter on one of my Q&A videos last year mentioned James Elroy, asked if I had ever read him. Uh, I hadn't, and uh, I looked up some different things, and specifically that commenter uh, recommended White Jazz, and he also clarified that even though that's the fourth installment in the L.A. Quartet, that I should start with it because that really shows the uh, Elroy of a certain prose style. I've seen this termed as telegrammatic prose because it's styled or fashioned after that of a telegram. However, uh, as for my Los Angeles reading list, I, it just made sense for me to go ahead and start out with Black Dahlia, which isn't written in that manner. It's a very uh, conventional uh, novelistic manner uh, in, in modeled on the police procedural genre. I've also never seen the movie Black Dahlia. I've only ever heard of the notorious uh, Los Angeles unsolved crime and so I thought it would be a good one to start out with. And while it definitely isn't my typical fare, it was still good enough uh, that I do want to continue on into the big nowhere LA Confidential and White Jazz. White Jazz I'm looking forward to the most because of the promise of this uh, unique style. But nonetheless, I'm not gonna jump right in and plow my way through. I'm gonna put some space in between. I love the way that Elroy approaches this monumental crime, uh, this horrifying murder of Elizabeth Short from Massachusetts uh, there in LA, and takes the, he, Elroy takes facts from the crime and then invents uh, these two fictional cop characters, let's call them. One is a sergeant, one is an officer. Nonetheless, they both end up uh, going from what appears to be competitors or really enemies to partners. Uh, and this forms a bond along with uh, the woman that one of the men is living with. They, it kind of forms this really nice triad, not a love triangle, but this nice triad, this character trio that uh, Elroy works up for the uh, story to have that sort of emotional propulsion. If you're going into this book just to learn about facts of the Elizabeth Short or Black Dahlia murder, you'll probably be bored by a lot of it because Elroy does work up a lot of government politics, law enforcement politics. He does model it on true turmoil within LAPD uh, and elsewhere. Uh, but then these fictional characters and all of their emotional baggage, including uh, first and foremost, Bleichert, uh, Bucky Bleichert with the trademark buck teeth uh, is this. I kept picturing uh, Thomas Pinchon just for fun. And uh, Elroy does a great job giving us a character that we can follow as a very, very flawed character, very morally, ethically flawed character um, with all this baggage that he brings in and then becomes obsessed with the Black Dahlia, both the solving of the murder and with the girl, Elizabeth Short, as well. And this obsession and the havoc it wreaks on his life and all the lives around him uh, is what makes this novel work and keeps you going. It also pushes us takes us from 1930s with John Fonte and with Nathaniel West, taking us out of the Depression era and into the 1940s in Los Angeles, all the way through just about that whole decade. But specifically, we are now in uh, World War II era and just after. Um, some notable things that happened that uh, made me really glad I picked this one up as part of my uh, Los Angeles vacation prep reading list is that, as with most uh, detective stories or police procedurals and so on, you get a good lay of the land. So whatever the setting is, you know, they're uh, all over the streets, you know, going from this place to that place and naming names and buildings and giving you little brief histories behind them uh, and what the landscape looks like. It's almost like a law enforcement officer as a travel guide. 
It also focuses on the famous uh, removal of the letters L-A-N-D from up on Lee Mountain, so that it went from saying Hollywood land up there to now just Hollywood. And that's one thing I'm really looking forward to doing is uh, I, my plan is to park at Griffith Observatory and then hike up to the Hollywood sign and get some pictures and video footage. So all in all, you know, a great look at 1940s LA as seen through the lens of a, uh, a very uh, checkered, tough guy, flawed law enforcement individual in the midst of race riots and police politics, and then of course the notorious murder that completely uh, obliterates the landscape of LA for a time. I look forward to pressing on to the big nowhere.